the VA present a brand new sketch show. Pipped at the podcast. Episode one, the Christmas special. Incredible, isn't it? I know. It's Everest. We spent a week climbing it. <laughs> I never thought we'd get here. Like our relationship, this mountain is a, it's a metaphor for the struggles we've overcome together. While well, I've got you here, babe, I've got something to say. Will you marry me? Uh, oh, God. As in, oh, God, yes? Oh, God, as in, uh, oh, God... No. Oh. Right. <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. We should uh, probably start heading... Uh, yeah, down. Heading, heading back down, yeah. Mm. After, after you. <laughs> <laughs> nice view. Um, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Quite, quite high up, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Very small peak. Why don't you want to marry me? Don't think it's the right time. The, the, the last few days, we've, we've been inseparable. The Sherpas wouldn't let us separate. We climbed Everest together. Yes, but we only met at base camp. This mountain is the only struggle we've overcome. It's, it's what you do up here. Why do you think they call it the Chapel of the Sky? The Wedding Mountain? The Summit of Love? They don't. I've never heard any of those. Oh. You just seem to have made a mountain out of a molehill in which the mountain is marriage and the molehill is, well, a mountain. It's a metaphor for our relationship. Hi, I'm Stephen, and, and I'm an alcoholic. Now, this is a bar, sir. Then I'm exactly where I need to be. Thank God I was sober enough to find this bar. A Christmas Carol, Chapter 1 It is a bright and jolly Christmas Eve morning. Wine is being mulled, presents are being misplaced, and children are playing violent video games inside. All is well, nothing is stirring. Ebenezer Scrooge enters his house after a long day of crushing dreams and saving on fossil fuels. At last, alone time. Ah, Timothy. I swear you're getting shorter. Thank you, sir. What do you want? Food would be most welcome, sir. Is the bakery not open? In the supermarket? Yes. That requires money. Well observed. You don't pay me. I give you advice. It's worth its weight in gold. Advice is weightless, and your first piece of advice was to never work for free. Touché. Good day, annoying child. (laughs) At last, alone time. Scrooge! Or not. Who said that? Scrooge! Come out from the darkness. Show yourself. (coughs) Scrooge, just thought I'd pop by and let you know you're in for a rough night. Jacob, you look the worse for wear. What do you mean, rough night? It's not the neighbours again, is it? Nope, they're out. The builders? Nope. Sickening speeches about my terrible personality leading to an irrevocable change to my character. Ebenezer, you have stumbled through life with your eyes closed. I have impeccable hearing. Your disregard for other people has not gone unnoticed. They are coming to cure you of your moral ills. Who's coming? You will be visited by three spirits. They'll visit you throughout the poca- I, I, I mean, throughout the night. Throughout the night. Right. Humbug? Oh, don't mind if I do. You were saying? Hmm? Oh yeah, spirits, visitation, etc. Also, are you alright, Ebenezer? You look like you've seen a ghost. Good 
job, everyone. Really good hustle. What was that? Battle of Stamford Bridge to Hastings in five days? Really tremendous work all round. Did it in such record time, too. I got these new shoes to boot, if you'll pardon the pun. Couldn't agree with you more, sire. I hate to be that guy, but I feel I should probably point something out. Yes, Lord Essex? It might be my imagination. I might be overblowing this, but where are the Normans? Well, they're they're just over... Uh, they're, they're just... I don't think they've arrived yet, Your Grace. Typical Norman timekeeping. Could be that. Alternatively, sire, it could be we're in the wrong place. Preposterous. What on earth do you mean, wrong place? We're about to win the Great Battle of Hastings. Where else could it be other than... One Hastings Road, Hastings. At Battle? It, it's just down the road. I'm only speculating here, but it is pretty much Hastings. That and it's where we received William's challenge from. And we saw his army there as we passed. What are you banging on about, Essex? Why didn't you inform your king? Well, I didn't say anything because I, your grace seemed really keen to get to Hastings High Street. You think I'd rush down here and ignore national security issues just to get cheaper shoes? Frankly, yes. Well, you're right, but, you know, why didn't he say battle then, eh? Because battle of battle doesn't have the same ring to it? You're full of it, Essex. We're having the Battle of Hastings, whatever you or William think, at Hastings. And that's final. I doubt William will wait for us here at Shoe Realm. Oh, if you want to have the Battle of Battle so much, go take your troops and clear off. Fine. We'll see who history remembers. Good decision, sire. I know, right? 50% off, and it's real leather. A Christmas Carol, Chapter 2 It is a cold and dark Christmas Eve afternoon day. Wine is being mulled, presents are being bought from the petrol station, and children are being ignored. Scrooge is lying awake in his bed, eyes wide in contemplation. I don't know what that blithering idiot was talking about. What was with the chains? This is Christmas, not Halloween. Three spirits. <laughs> I'll stick to whiskey any day. Scrooge. Oh, for goodness sake. No, Scrooge. For yours. Why do they make it sound so sinister? I've come to remind you of your past. <laughs> Do you remember when you fell down the stairs and broke your hip in front of that girl you fancied? I really wish I couldn't. <laughs> Everyone was laughing. <laughs> yes. Yes, they were. It was not the kind of hip-hop I had intended to show her. Oh, oh, and remember, remember when you got captured by the Russians and then tortured? <laughs> that didn't happen. Whoops, sorry, wrong file. One simple question. Who are you? I'm the ghost of awkward past. I'm here to remind you of all the embarrassing things that happened ten or more years ago. Tell me, are you bored? Yes. You need a hobby. What's a hobby? It's a thing that people do to pass the time and prevent them doing exactly what you are doing right now. Trespassing. Look, I've got two more appointments this evening, so I might as well show you in the meantime. Let me introduce you to YouTube. Good afternoon, sir. Gosh, you're quick. I see you've picked up one of our personality shoes there. Do you like it? Yes, I, I rather do. Well, you're in luck. That particular item is on sale. Oh, goody. Could I try the other shoe, please? Other shoe, sir? Yes, the one to match. One to match? Yes, right. Size nine? Size nine? Yes, you parrot. I'd like to try on the pair. Ah. Uh, did Sir not read the name of this shop? The Shoe the Ethical Left Shoe Shop. We treat all of our left shoes as individuals with respect. So no right shoes at all? Certainly not, sir. We don't agree with pairing shoes up against their will. But this shoe... Yes? ...was surely delivered with a right shoe, right? Now, now. I heard you the first time. Of course it arrived like that. But we prefer our shoes to find it themselves. Find what exactly? Well, they're soulmates. Get lost. Sir? You're having me on. I'm in the wrong shop, aren't I? No, sir. You're in the right shop. The right left shoe shop. 
That's a fundamentally useless shop. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I... Oh. <laughs> you, think, you think I don't know that? You think I wanted this? This was the sale I rested my career on. My dance instructor said I had two left feet, so I, I thought I had a viable business. Now I'm going to be jobless, my wife is going to leave me, and, and my right foot is cold. Your wife's leaving you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Have you thought about getting into socks? Have you heard anything I said? I don't believe in pairing things up. But there aren't left and right socks. They work on both feet. They do? I just thought I'd got it right every time. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Thank you, sir. You've, you've turned my life around. Where's the nearest sock shop? I'll apply right away. Out the door. To your right. Fantastic. To my left, right? Sure. It's to the right of the right-left shoe shop. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That one. Before you go, yes. is your wife about? What do you want to watch tonight, then? Oh, I don't mind. I chose last Sunday, so it's your turn now. Mm, OK, then. I'll, I'll surprise you. He put his arm around her again, blissfully unaware that she shuddered at the thought of his greasy finger touch. What? What is it, sweetie? Did you just say you hate the thought of me touching you? No, I haven't said a word. Oh, OK. M- maybe it was something I heard on the film. <sighs> Ugh. Whenever he sniffed like that, she had to fight the overwhelming urge to throw up. Never had she known a more putrid, vile human being. The only way she could stand to be near him was to plot his early demise in ways he couldn't even imagine. Okay, now I know I'm not crazy. You're doing it again. Doing what? I I don't know. It's like you're narrating your life or something. I honestly don't know what you're on about. You sound crazy, she said lying through her teeth. He was on to her, and she didn't know how. Hopefully, he had no clue how many ways she'd visualised his death since they'd been together. We've been together for eight years. I know, honey. We just had our anniversary. As if she needed reminding of every day that had passed in this soul-sucking relationship. Look, is this some kind of weird way of breaking up with me? Why would you say that? Do you want to break up with me? What? what? No, you're the one who's saying how much you hate me. I would never. You're really upsetting me now, Mike. Look, I'm sorry. I guess I was out of order. I'm just really confused. I mean, you keep saying all these things about how many ways you want to kill me and I don't know what's going on. I just I don't understand why you would think that. She had to think fast. He was onto her. Luckily, she'd poisoned the pizza and it was only a matter of seconds before he would... <laughs> he had known all along. Swapping the pizza whilst she and her plans were in the toilet. A Christmas Carol, Chapter 3 It is a cold and dark Christmas Eve night evening. The mulled wine has largely been consumed. The Michael Bublé CD has been tucked away for another year. Safely. Since our last encounter with him, Scrooge has been showing his ghostly visitor the wonders of the internet. Look! He's eating cat food! With chopsticks! Oh, it's adorable! If this is the best humanity can come up with... You know what? I'm absolutely fine with that. Scrooge! Another one. I have a first name, you know. Ebenezer. Whatever. I bring gifts for you. Oh. Now here's someone who knows how to make a good first impression. Go ahead and open it, sir, for I am the ghost of Christmas presents. Blue tag. I am the ghost of lacklustre Christmas presents. Nail on the head. I don't want blue tag. Um, you don't sound very grateful there, Mr. Scrooge. Shut up and watch the cats. Okay. You get the presents you need, not the ones you deserve. Now take these socks and look like you're enjoying life. But I don't feel like... One for the album. Sorry, friend, I'm a sign that it's going to be a really bad Christmas. I bet you're great at parties. Sarcasm, eh? Well, allow me to conjure you a sports car. Well, it's better than the blue tag. But how am I supposed to get that out of my living room? That's your problem. Ah, there he is, the third member of our group. Gosh, he's tall. Allow me to apologise on behalf of our colleague. He doesn't talk very much. So I hear. Now that you're all here, I've got to ask. 
Why are you tormenting me? What have I ever done wrong? No, can I come in now? It's starting to snow! I said stay out! Sorry, my son. You've got to cut them off at eight and change the locks or they'll never learn. As I was saying, what have I done wrong? Why me? Um... Our colleague is writing an answer. It reads... Something to do. Right. You know what? Let me show you something. I run a very successful business. I have a ton of money. Come with me. We are going to hit the town. And so, Ebenezer Scrooge took the ghosts out into the town centre. Poor Tiny Tim didn't hear them leaving out the back door. They browsed shops that weren't open, while Scrooge wished he could move through walls. They helped decorate the 20-foot Christmas tree with an improvised angel formed of two baubles and a very large stocking. They even spray-painted the walls with Christmas cheer before settling down for a drink at Scrooge's favourite establishment. This is incredible! What did you call this drink again? Drambuie. Isn't that your fifth pint? It's a good thing you're dead. Or you'd be dead. God bless us, everyone! One day I'll be rid of you, but since you're here, here's a pint. Go to the bar and fill it up. This is the best Christmas ever! Isn't it beautiful? The wonders of an unbridled, capitalist Christmas. Cheers. And so, Scrooge drank into the night with his new ghost friends, completely unrepentant. The end. Thank you for listening to the first instalment of Pipped at the Podcast. The voices you heard were Scott Wilson, Beth Kerridge, Wackamunir, Luke Mallison, Will Offer, Rosalind Beeson, and yours truly, Mike Hayward. It featured music by Sebastian Romero and Cobalt Z. For future updates regarding this series, stay tuned to at VA underscore comedy on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash VA dot southwest, or subscribe on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, or tail us on the M4. Anyway, happy holidays, and we'll see you in 2016. <laughs>